فما زلت ذا عفو عن الذنوب لم تزل تجود وتعفو منة وتكرما Uh, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Welcome back to another episode of Jolof After Jumra It's been... I think it's been like a month Yeah, yeah. It's the longest we've ever gone without yeah. recording um, Apologies But like we say, uh, I think we kind of warned the people Quality mm. Over quantity And also people going on holidays People are doing flash new courses And trying to get million pounds Don't say too much Don't say too much Don't say too much Say mashallah So, um, so yeah, so... Um, I don't. I think. Up. I think it's uh, not as long as in the Maktaba. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the Maktaba, it's been about three months. So you guys are still doing alright. We made promises. That's the thing. We, we promised a regular podcast. Oh really? Uh, yeah. Was, <laughs> a long time ago, we did. But um, yeah, uh, he's already broken his silence. But alhamdulillah, after what was it, about two years? It's been two years. Yeah, I had to grow my dreads back. <laughs> so it's nice to come back on the podcast. Um, we've tracked him down, and alhamdulillah, we've got uh, Ustad Abdul Ahid Stevenson back on the podcast. Um, Always a pleasure. Yeah, Dean of Medina College, etc., etc. We know who he is, a graduate from uh, Islamic University of Medina, Faculty of Sharia, because uh, everybody does that and nobody likes to study anything else. Had they thought that one, obviously, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, how are you, Ustad, firstly? Alhamdulillah, good, thanks. Barakallahu thanks for having me. And it's. Uh, was a pleasure, even though the topic's always the same, but less. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we didn't speak about it, right? I don't think we did. did okay. we? I was with Ramadan, no. preparation, yeah. that type of stuff. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, anyone, anytime someone wants to speak about marriage, they uh, yeah. they, they, they call a certain man. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, we're going to be speaking, inshallah, about marriage, um, but not about getting married and, you know, all of that, that stage, because, um, you know, alhamdulillah, we're all, we've all got greys in our beards, so we're all old men. So, um, so we're going to speak a bit about uh, the other side, which is maybe some of the more negative sides of marriage, uh, specifically marital issues, um, reasons why people um, get into marital issues, um, and hopefully, inshallah, solutions and ways people can kind of work their ways out of it. Um, so the first question I want to ask us, is, inshallah, is um, how, obviously, you, you yourself, you're you know, quite involved with a lot of counselling. How did you get involved in that? Um, bismillah. So... Um, I guess I'm less involved in counselling now as I used to be. I used to have a kind of a Sharia council called AW Sharia, um, and that would do mediation between couples, um, you know, either, you know, resolving differences or conflict, divorce, and khula, and this type of stuff. And how I got into it was when I was the Imam of the Masjid, basically. So a lot of the cases that come up and still come up are to do with marital problems uh, whether it's the wife calling up or the husband calling up because he has an issue with his wife or the wife has an issue with her husband um, and seeking first of all advice and then in some cases third party intervention and <clears throat> one of the um, things that I did when I was at university was um, uh, something called alternative dispute resolution okay. i.e. before you go to court mm. So obviously, if it's possible to resolve a difference before you go to court, then that's always good, right? Is because this is secular, right? So it was looking at mediation, arbitration, and umpiring specifically. Uh, so mediation is where they mediate the problem, but you're kind of there to facilitate the mediation. Arbitration is they come to you for a decision and you give them a decision, and then umpiring is something else. So mediation and arbitration are the main ones. Uh, what we have in Islam is something called tahkim, right? If there's a dispute between the two parties and they can't resolve it, they're supposed to take a member of her family, a member from his family, to come and do tahkim between them. Um, so that's arbitration, basically, right? Are there any, sorry, are there any uh, kind of guidelines on who that person is and should be? Yeah, so it's usually, obviously, the, the, the senior chief of the tribe, the person that's uh, got their interests at heart. The person that's basically, be, what, well, the question is, why is it a member of each of their family, right? Why not just one person? Why one of each of the family? Uh, there's two aspects to it, and this is really important in terms of mediation between a couple. Usually, they, are, they have a vested interest in saving the marriage because mm. it's their family. Mm. The other aspect is also they're able to understand the nuances in terms of the conflict because... 
it's their family, mm. right? So relationships are very complex. Someone has a disagreement or a, com- or a conflict in a relationship or a disagreement or a dispute or a conflict, or whatever. It's usually something that built up over a long time and there's usually things that happen beforehand. This is like the last stage. So usually those family members will be in aware of the dynamics of the family, the different family members. It's easier for them to have a, a full understanding of the complexity of the situation to be able to provide a solution. Now in Islam, that solution, the scholars differ with regards to the hukum of the hakim and the situation of tahkim. I.e. when these two family members come together, does that now become binding whatever they decide or does or do the couple afterwards have a decision. Op- decision? Meaning if these two family members come together and after hearing both sides and say, okay, divorce, that's it, it's binding. So is it a ruling or is it a... Is it a ruling or is it kind of an advice and a nasiha, a very strong one, do you get what I mean? Mm. Um, but apart from that, that's, that's, so I, I did that as a master's, as a module in the master's I was doing. Um, and that's so that I can obviously, you know, uh, better mm. mediate between couples. So that's how I kind of got into it, yeah. So it seems, it seems like an obvious question, but marital issues, are they, are, they norm, are they normal? And if so, that's got an obvious answer, but if so, to what extent? Because I'm sure a lot of people are probably looking, thinking, you know, I've got, especially new couples, you know, this, is, yeah. this isn't what it's cracked up to be. She's a... She's not what I thought, the, the stew isn't as nice as I thought, etc. Yeah. No, no, anything I say in this podcast is not, it's not personal. It's not personal, by the way. It doesn't even eat stew at home. It just, it's stew just, isn't yeah. even a deal. <laughs> stew has nothing to do with yeah. it's just what, I've heard what it had to do yesterday. Just what I've heard <laughs> um, yeah, so like, um, yeah, to what extent? So what, 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 what constitutes severe issues, too many issues, yeah. and the like? Um, one of the important things with regards to relationships, I mean, you get when you get married specifically, uh, is that the fact is you're living with somebody for the first time who you're also, for want of a better word, you know, married to, Mm. i.e. you're sleeping with, you have intimacy with, right? And, you know, that's never happened before. You you might live with your siblings, stuff like that, but that's a different dynamic completely. Mm. So now you're living with somebody and I think the mistake people make is expecting they're not to be uh, expecting it not to take a long time for them to grow into each other sure. basically they think that okay it's going to be fine straight away or off yeah, yeah. which is a hu- huge mistake because in the hit with the reality hold on a minute you're annoying mm. this is annoying and that's annoying and this is annoying do you get what i mean and the thing is what i want to recommend there's a there's a book i want to i want to show right now for this it's called new the words instruction manual okay. it's a different one okay here are some of the things it mentions. I just want to highlight this, right? Because what it does is a practical. It gives you some practical advices or speaks about practical mm-hmm. problems, right? One of the things it speaks about, you know, just having a quick look at the index, right? It speaks about, um, uh, you know, moving it together, merging your stuff, decluttering a man's room. It mentions that specifically as a topic, right? Mm. Uh, you know, decorating, then it's cohabitation, I decorate like a blending styles, okay, you've got your style, she's got her style. You know, who picks the colour of the... That can be an argument, do you see what I mean? Jeez. You know, cooking and eating, yeah. dividing chores, you know, that's always an issue. Morning yeah. routines, evening routines, after work routines. One of the points it, it, it speaks about is when you're living together, you know, you have kind of like habits and quirks. Mm. I love you, but I don't love your noises, you know. Mm. So I'll just on, a, on a simplest note, simplest note, you've never sat together necessarily and ate together as a couple, right? Yeah. So you've never, so she sits down at dinner, you're at dinner, the first night you're at home together or on a honeymoon or whatever it is. And she starts munching and she munches loud. Mm. She's a loud muncher, makes a lot of noise. And you, you're like, you know, can you quiet her down? Yeah, what is this? Yeah, what are you? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to eat so loud. Can you, yeah. can you allow to eat a bit quieter? But that's yeah. just how she, that's her habit. Mm. Do you get what I mean? And there's, there's so many of those, you know, so, totally. I mean, there was, I think there was a TikTok just quickly that I saw the other day where it's like the man at the fridge drinking, uh, milk, taking the milk. Right. So he drinks from the bottle and then his wife yeah. comes in and he automatically pours it in a cup, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And likewise, as well, he's, got a, he's made his tea and he's about to put the tea bag in the sink and his wife comes in and he puts it in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so right? you're quite natural, yeah. Yeah, so those are the kind of things that you have to get used to and it takes time. So like having said all of this, isn't it easier to just, you know, spend a bit more time getting to know each other to break through that stage? Because I guess a lot for a lot of, um, 
Muslims living in the West, what we're used to or what we see around us, what we see on TV, etc., is people going through all of this before they get married, get married yeah. Yeah. wondering, realizing that okay, you know, despite all your faults, I love you and I want to spend time with you. Then they get married with a lot of this knowledge already. Yeah, and, and then they get divorced just as quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I guess you've kind of answered the question I was going to yeah. ask. No, I think, I th- I think um, either way, you're always going to have to um, come across these... I mean, you're never going to be able to live beforehand with your spouse. That's the first thing. The, so you're, there's something that you're never going to know until you get married, basically. I, you, can, you can ask as many questions as you like. Yeah. This is why marriage meetings that extend uh, for a... Uh, a very long time I uh, don't have an end to it mm. they're, wa- they're literally a waste of time because you can never find out never these things so, yeah. that happen yeah. when you actually live together and get married it's not possible okay unless you live together that's haram obviously it's not permissible um, and then there's no excitement then you lose the excitement of, of, of marriage basically if yeah. that did happen anyway which is why those marriages don't last long mm. I blind, blind, blind marriages are fine. I think that is possible, Peter. There's a, they, they obviously work because the, there's a whole continent that does that. Even like in a non-Islamic way, yeah. like what time, for example, like South Asian culture. Yeah. It, it works. There. It works. It works. It is, it's no less successful than knowing the person beforehand by meeting them and stuff like that and talking to them for three months and, you know, sending messages and finding out their favourite food, their favourite place, where they want to go when you get married, where you want, what you want to do on your first evening or next week and stuff like that there's no yeah right, should we get into the big one what's the big one money uh, money 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 mal money man. what 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 is money important and yes why? Like, very important 100 uh, percent important why because <laughs> because we <laughs> live in, to speak. because we live in london <laughs> we live in london the cost of living is high Okay. So no, money is important. Yeah, money is important because you have an obligation to provide for your wife, and she obviously wants to be able to buy stuff. Mm. Yeah, you answered my question. I was going to say, so is it important for the man to have money, or the woman, or both? Uh, it's important for the man to have money, and if the woman has money, it's a benefit. It's a, mm. it's a plus. Is it a benefit? It is a. Be- I think it is. What is do it you always, think? Is it always a benefit? Because yeah, you've got more experience with this than me, but even outside of the Islamic community, the issue of the man who's essentially living off or relies on the woman for financial you know, support is a cause of tension, especially in like Nigerian, for example, community, mm-hmm. our community. Why is that? And how does one, how do, how do couples kind of manage that situation? How does the man get to be the man if he's not the provider? Um... I think the man's a man because he's the leader and the decision maker. Mm-hmm. And he's got a strong sense of personality and um, he's, he's, got a, he's got a sense of purpose. I, he leads naturally because he's got a sense of purpose, he's got value in love himself and stuff like that. So he's not got a weak character. There's that aspect of it. Uh, the second aspect in terms of... Uh, money and in, as it pertains to the the woman have money then obviously we know that the hadith of the message of Allah mentions woman's made for four things included in that is her money right the maliha right her money as well uh her beauty her, her lineage her, her social as to her basically family basically and her deen and choose one that has deen you know don't in others don't sacrifice deen over money and these other things that you're going to marry for beauty and all the others um, so, and you know, you see in the life of the uh, companions, you you find if there's instances where the wife uh, spent on her husband and had money at her wife as well, right? I you know spending on her husband, giving her sadaqah, and all the like. So that's the issue isn't her having money. The issue is her mentality, because she spends. The issue isn't the money itself, it's her mentality. Meaning, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that what you have is a society where women believe or it's uh, encouraged for a woman to have a career over everything else. Yeah. Uh, to be independent yeah. financially through a career, yeah. not through wealth. Yeah. Right? Independent through wealth is fine. Independent through wealth to, to, by having a career to get that wealth is where you have 
Potential issues. Potential issues, yeah. Meaning what? She may believe wrongly and to, her, to, the, to the detriment of the relationship, the marriage, that because she's independent financially and she brings money in, it means that she's also uh, have, has a uh, seitara of her husband, mm. meaning have, has a kind of dominance of her husband because of that, mm. right? Uh, so that's where the problem comes in. Whether you call it feminism or not, it's up to you. Call it what you like, right? You call it feminism, I think it's more capitalism than feminism because the economy kind of um, uh, benefits from it yeah. more than yeah. she does, yeah. right? So it's not really feminism because feminism, she's supposed to benefit from it, she doesn't. So um, I'm guessing you've had this... Okay, before I go there. So in that, that situation, kind of the, not defending these women, but talking for these women that situation where you're whatever the situation is like we just said London you need money yeah. so money is needed yeah. I'm maybe I've married you but maybe I'm the one who's got the university degree I'm the one who's more skilled yep. my husband's been made redundant or as a tradesman or whatever yep. where I'm the one who's able to bring in the money yep. um, and essentially I have to live a life where I'm working long hours or whatever to support the family for no fault of my own because it's, it's necessary. But um, my husband, for example, is still expectant of after I get home at nine o'clock or eight o'clock, dinner must be ready. I have to, you know, he's expecting the house to be made up, the kids close, the guy for school tomorrow, etc., etc., etc. How do you, how do you as a kind of council manage that situation? Is it that the men... Anyway, yeah. How, how does he manage that? Yeah, so just to kind of summarise the situation, she's working long hours. He's also working, I'm maybe assuming. He's not, maybe he's or he's not. But he, to work, for whatever, but, but yeah, but he's, he's got more time on his hands. He's got so. more time on his hands. Or he's working. Let's look at both situations separately, right? Okay, yeah. he's working as well. She's working, but they can't depend just on his income because it's lower than hers and she's the one that brings in most of the money. They need that to maintain their lifestyle. Mm. Okay, no problem. That means he's basically allowing her to work because there's a general muscle or benefit there. Mm. At the same time, he's also demanding that she, when she comes home, she also has to make sure she's doing the uh, chores in the house and uh, cooking looking dinner, after home. looking after optimally, the home, yeah. optimally as well. Uh, in that situation, uh, I'm assuming that, sh you know, there's two options in that situation. The first option is he can't expect her to do both, okay? So he's got an option. He says, look, I'm, you're, not allowed, you're not going to work anymore because it's affecting managing and maintaining the house. And any loss of income that's going to result in that, as long as it's going to impact negatively on the house, I'm going to cover, yeah. meaning that the bills are still going to be paid. Right, the rent will still be paid. The bills are still going to be paid. You're not going to get evicted. You're not going to get any red letters saying that you, can't be, you know, mm -hmm. gas is getting cut off, electric. The necessities, basically. Yeah. Then she has to be patient with that situation. She might lose out on some luxuries, but she has to be patient in that situation, especially if we're speaking about kids being there as well. Okay? That's one situation. The other situation is, they look at their uh, combined income, and this is what I'd advise. Uh, as a uh, man that's also working, she's working, Put in something in place where you pay for a cleaner to come clean up once a month, once a week to cover the cleaning. You pay for someone to do the ironing if that's what you're missing out on because she mm -hmm. can't do it, for example. I don't overwork her because you still want her to also perform optimally in the bedroom. You still want her to be nice, put on perfume. You still want her to look beautiful for you, yeah. isn't it? She can't do all of that. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Work, She's not a... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 no, that's right. so there's that aspect that's one side okay the side where he's not doing it he's not working while he's not working he can help out there's no doubt until he finds a job but that shouldn't be a perpetual state yeah. if that's a perpetual state that's the end of the marriage in the long run yeah, so can, in the long run that's the end of the marriage that shouldn't be a perpetual state should he get the iron out should he get huh? the yeah get the iron out all day long why not iron if it's going to help him, if it's going to alleviate but that shouldn't be like I said that should be while he's doing, while he's at home, because otherwise, what's he doing? It needs to be a transition. It can't be the norm. It's a transition. It's yeah. not the norm. I, he's, he's, it's better. He's working, always. Um, I think one thing you kind of alluded to, or you didn't allude to, but you mentioned that, um, men are kind of natural leaders because they have that strong sense of purpose. Yeah. Um, I think kind of um, 
the society we kind of live in today and kind of all of the isms yeah. that we suffer from as well. Um, I think women are kind of cultivated to have that strong sense of purpose as well. Yeah. So um, what would you say in a situation where I don't know, um, maybe a woman also has that kind of mentality that you kind of alluded to before about having that strong sense of purpose or maybe even for brothers that may not necessarily have that strong sense of purpose yeah. yet, do they yeah. wait? Or um, is there a way to kind of cultivate that? And again, for maybe people that are in that situation, the women, and maybe they maybe butt heads a little bit. Yeah. What would you kind of advise for those kind of situations? Don't make a career woman. No. No, that's the <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's. Yeah. Important. Okay, look. That's, 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 that's the norm now, basically. Yeah, yeah so is, the, so, the yeah. thing is. The thing is, um, without saying that she has a place, he has a place, she has to know her place, he has to know his place, mm. we're speaking about a kind of social construction, like you said, that, that's part of you know the society, yeah. the society, societal norm, isn't it? Mm. So it's easier said than done, right? Because you're a product of your society to a large degree, yeah. or to a lesser degree, whatever. But you're still a product of your society. Um, no, but the thing is, the, the thing is, we have, this is, I guess, another book I'm going to speak about now. We have guidance and guidelines and we have knowledge. We have Quran and we have a Sunnah, right? So everything that we get from external, we need to measure against what the Quran and the Sunnah says. And external, I mean from a society which is a non-Islamic society that doesn't necessarily, uh, even though it may do in some aspects, um, uh, uh, represent all uh, the Islamic values, right? It might do in some aspects just because they're universal values, right? But it might not in many aspects, right? And in terms of the role of the gender roles, it definitely doesn't, right? We know that now. Mm. You know, there's no bi binary, all that other nonsense. Now, you definitely know that doesn't represent. Uh, okay, so that being the case, then we have stuff like this book here called Tuhfat al Urus, which is called The Bride's Boon, right? And this book is in English, it's translated. And it's basically an A to Z, or A to Z, depends how you want to pronounce it, on everything to do with getting married to uh, relationships and, you know, intimacy, for example, it says recommendations before marriage in the bedroom, caressing one's wife when this consummation of marriage with her, what her husband says to his wife in the first woman's speech, stuff like that, right? It says the message of Allah, the funny husband, relationships. Who's the author? Uh, the author is Mahmoud al-Istanbuli, right? It's a... Uh, but it's a famous book, it's well known, right? It's, it's, it's got widely accepted. I think Sheikh Lubani does a takhrij on it as well, right? Uh, the superiority of preserv preservation of one's wife, marriage's enjoyment and responsibility. So it's a really good book. So every house should have that book anyway. And it becomes like, okay, you know, um, it becomes kind of like a way where you measure, measure things against. Going back to, so that will highlight, for example, some aspects of it. Okay, that's theory though, that's the issue, isn't it? What we're saying, this is theory. How do you practice it? Yeah. What, how do you nurture it in, in the... How does a man nurture, how does a woman nurture being submissive to her husband, being obedient to her husband, for example, you know, as a word which people don't like? And how does a man learn to take charge, take charge right? In a society where we're used to always kind of... Um, what is it? Cooperating. We'll split yeah. the bill. Oh, you can decide this time, I'll decide next time. You know, okay, no, you don't like that. Okay, you can have that. Society so is new to us. Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of that aspect, isn't there? You know, so there's nothing wrong with consultation. There, let's get that clear. No one's saying that, you know, a woman can't know what the man's doing and the man does everything by himself and doesn't consult. That's stupid. No, mm -hmm. Islam doesn't say that either. Yeah. Right? It's not a case of... But, but the point is, the point is everyone has a role and the man by his nature is strong. The woman by nature is vulnerable. The man by his nature wants to lead. The woman by nature, she wants to please. Mm. That's just, that's just fitra. You know, as much as society wants to change it, that doesn't change. Her going out and being a career woman doesn't remove that from her fitra. Mm -hmm. It means now she's actually working outside of her comfort zone, generally speaking. It shows itself. Yeah. And it shows time itself. It shows it. Time and time again. Yeah, it, it will show itself. It will show itself in the long run. And uh, her, and in, in, in reality, the moment she gets married and has kids, it's a relief for her. It's another job, don't get me wrong, but it's a relief away from that, the, 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 the hardship that comes by being a career woman, basically, and the challenges that come with it and the you know, compromises and all that other stuff. Um, but yeah, as for a man, then it's, I guess, a case of kind of looking at, like I said, uh, the guidelines in Islam 
And the best thing is to read the seer of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's nothing better than that. Take a book like When the Moon Split or the Sealed Nectar and just read through it and read it again. Read about the biographies of the uh, Khulaf al-Rashidin, Umar ibn Khattab, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and, and you'll see how, how men are. And then that's it, start to imitate from that aspect. And stay away from those uh, toxic, toxic speakers, toxic masculine speakers that all have masculinity. Yeah, stay away from those. They don't represent... They don't represent good leaders in the house. They might say they might be popular, but they don't represent good husbands or good men. Mm. Regardless of whether they say stuff that clicks with Muslims and say stuff that sounds good and talk mm. about having two wives, three wives, and it's nice and fun, but they don't represent. Um, uh, yeah. Lead you astray. Yeah. In the end, in the end, they're going to lead you astray 100. percent Ali bin Khalid said, "Like uh, speak truths to to spread about the about the khuruj. Um, speak good words, true words to." Yeah, yeah, that's like, right, one hundred percent. It's it's money and it's audience. Mm. Um, divorce. Yeah. Is it is seeking divorce a bad thing in and of itself? Uh, divorce has different uh, stages. Sometimes it might be it's a bad thing. Like for example, when a man uses divorce, or when a divorce is used. Like you, okay, how, how, how do we know it's a bad thing? We know it's a bad thing because we have the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said a woman seeks divorce from, from her husband without a reason, what? Smother fragrance of paradise. Mm. That shows you divorce is a bad thing. We have the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where the, the, uh, the devil, Iblis, you know, he's, he's junood, his soldiers come to him and say, I made this person do this sin and that sin. And then he says, go away, you've done nothing, 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 nothing. Until one of them come and says, I made a, a split up man and his wife. And he hugged him and brought him close. So you can see that divorce can be a bad thing, right? Uh, and at the same time, we have to look at the, the, the text holistically. There's instances where divorce is a good thing. It's better for the relationship. It's better for the marriage, right? They can't, they cannot, it's better for the individuals. It's better for the children. It's better for everyone involved at some time. So divorce, some, there's times that divorce becomes an obligation, right? It sometimes becomes an obligation for you to divorce your a wife or divorce your husband like if they apostate for example then comes an obligation the marriage is nullified anyway or for example if she's nashuz nashiza then it becomes you know you do as an answer if you don't do so you know there's different stages but generally speaking if the marriage is okay um, you know there's nothing major then divorce shouldn't be uh, i.e. you shouldn't you should settle and always seek to settle with, with the situation that you have always seek to kind of settle with it. Don't, divorce shouldn't be something that's easy. Okay. So with kind of marital issue, what would you say, at what kind of point do you know that you need to seek help from like a third party, i.e. like you like spoke about uh, before, like seeking uh, help from one member of each family or going to the amount for counselling, at what point do you, I guess, you need to decide as a couple that you need to now seek a third party? Um, I guess that's a hard one because that's kind of always, um, on yeah, it's always dependent on the individuals and their situation and how, um, but what, what I'd say, you know, okay, sometimes, for example, somebody uh, seeks help because they don't have any male members in their family. So they're going to have to seek help earlier so they can get you know, advice earlier. Whereas some of them have got male members in their family so they can get advice through that, if they want to. Some people don't want to seek advice through their family members. They don't, the women, for example, they don't want them to know what's going on, right? Men generally don't like to go for advice because it's weakness, right? It shows that they've got a problem with their family, they don't want to show that. But, um, generally speaking, you know, you know, it's going to be if, you know, it's, this is a breaking point, meaning that after this is a kind of like, you know, if we don't work it out now, it looks we're going to divorce. Mm. Literally. Or just maybe like, because somebody's asked me this question before, uh, in my grand old age and wise age, but, and I said, if you can't talk to each other, if, if you talking to each other only makes the situation worse, like you can't communicate to make any sort of positive change, yeah. then you should go and speak to somebody. Yeah. Like, would that be... Yeah, I think that's a fair, I think that's a fair practical way to look at it. If you can... If the only, <laughs> But it's quite obvious. But yeah, <laughs> if 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 all communication you have is going to be mm-hmm. arguing mm-hmm. negative, then yeah, then there's a huge problem mm-hmm. in that relationship. Basically, mm-hmm. you know, there has to be. I, for example, Islamically, 
you know, if you dislike something about your spouse, then look at the things that you like. What did you get married for in the first place? I don't focus on the negatives. Negatives are always going to, there's always going to be positives. No one's purely good or purely bad, mm -hmm. right? Everyone has qualities which are good and qualities which are bad. So when it comes to the person that you, so all of a sudden you can't no longer stand in your life, where's all the good qualities? Start mm -hmm. looking, I change your focus yani, to the qualities which are good and then seek those out again in both sides. But yeah, if your communication, sometimes you need someone to communicate on your behalf because you're unable to express yourself properly. So then you get a third party intervention. Right, in the case of women, for example, or in the case of men, for example, he wants to kind of, you know, he's taking a second wife and his first wife's really upset about it. So he wants someone to kind of intervene yeah, I love it. and speak on, yeah. speak on, you know, try to placate and make the situation better. For example. You brought it up, not me, but. Okay. No, no, I'm just trying to, give, up, trying to give actual, <laughs> actual scenarios of what happens. Do you get what I mean? So what, do you want to talk about polygamy? Oh, no, I'm joking. Um, Okay, without using the word sabre or patience, yeah. if you're, somebody's feeling unsatisfied with their wife, they've got, or husband, they've got this feeling, they're lying in bed and like, you know, this isn't good enough or whatever, what should they do? Um, then, the uh, same thing, they need to look at themselves, i.e., it's not their wife in this situation at the moment, it's themselves they need to kind of address at the moment. Okay, what is it that they're going through at this moment that's made them change from being satisfied to being unsatisfied? Because they were satisfied at one point, why have they become unsatisfied? We discover what, what it was. And the problem here is that it's almost as if she's, the blame is because I, he's looking at saying, okay, well, you're not satisfying me, right? That's not the issue, there's an underlying issue there that needs to be addressed, that's one thing. Whatever that is, there's something there that needs to be addressed. Because he was satisfied at one point, now he's not satisfied. Uh, so some of it needs to, he needs to work on himself somewhere down the line. That's just a fact in this case. Um, as much as it's hard to kind of see, it's, it comes down to him. Something's happened. The second thing is, and, you know, uh, you know, if he's got the means and he's got the money and he's financially able to, uh, you know, do it, then take a second wife, there's no harm doing that, in all honesty. And you know, but after he's addressed what's made, because that's not going to that's not going to fix his problem with his first that's wife. Right. That's going to aggravate it anyway. Mm -hmm. That's going to aggravate it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not going to change the fact of satisfied, you know, being satisfied. That's a fact. That's also a fact, right? Um, so yeah. So if he's got the means, there's no harm taking a second wife, but not after he's fixed the reason why he's not satisfied. Become satisfied again and then take a second wife. So don't, don't take a second wife like, while you're satisfied. Don't run away from your problems. Not while you're wife. unsatisfied. This is a mistake. This is a, that's a huge mistake. Communication. So like we did our, we, you did, um, you did my premarital counseling. Yeah. And the biggest kind of focus was communication, communication, communication. And you know, whenever there's a problem between two people, somebody's always going to say, oh, it's a communication to issue. So within people, you know, looking at themselves, what, steps can people take to kind of make themselves a better person to come and talk to i don't know if i asked that right but you know yeah. i can't talk to her because if i whenever i say something that's wrong she just gets emotional and oh i can't talk to him because he just closes up like what kind of what things can people do within yep. themselves to be more open yeah. to, resolu to resolution um based on the experience yeah like so Sometimes when it comes to uh, uh, problems uh, communicating between the spouses, the actual issue doesn't get addressed. Instead, it becomes, it becomes, uh, it becomes missed, like completely. The way you said it, it's an attack. It's a, it's, it's a blame game. It's, mm -hmm. it's a criticism, right? You know, uh, and in all honesty, it's, you know, Let's take, for example, a simple one. Oh, you know, a simple, uh, you know, oh, you, you didn't do this, right? Whatever it is, you didn't take the rubbish out. Or uh, you didn't make dinner, or you didn't cook, or you didn't make tea, or, or whatever it is, right? It's a, okay, the, what's, now that's become an accusation. The person has to now defend themselves, isn't it? Where if it's a case of, it's a taking the rubbish out, it's done every night, it's a chore, it's, you know, there's a different way in which you're going to say it to make it acceptable by the other person. Um, and again, this book covers a lot of that. I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to plug it again, but I, I'm going to just mention a, a, a point of, of conflict resolution, all right? 
You can put it in the description. Okay, great. It says how to fight. Why is it saying how to fight? You think it's a fight when we ch- we're married, you're not supposed to fight. No, you're yeah. supposed to fight. Yeah. You're, not sure. supposed to sh- you're not supposed to shy away from conflict because that's not going to be, that means you're not getting any, you know, you're not able to communicate your, so it's about, it's not, it's about how to do it. Yeah. So it's not about not fighting or they're not being in a conflict, but it's about how to do it so that it results in improvement in the relationship, right? right. Exactly. So one of the things it says is address the issue, not the person. Right, so when you do bring up a gripe, so within the content of the actual issue, I focus on the matter at hand that allows you to bypass a character assassination, leads to more fights and hurt feelings. The other thing is be a generous listener, right? I.e., uh, if, per- if your spouse is a person of the complaint, if something's bothering him or her enough to bring it up, she deserves your respect and attention. Listen fully before jumping in with a defensive but I. Let them finish completely. Mm. Just listen. Don't, you don't have to justify, explain, or do anything. It's just you're there to listen, basically, right? Mm. Uh, you know, don't turn it around and make it about you. Talk softly, you know, ask specific questions, make concessions, make up. There's other things it says. Don't, don't, dis- don't have a fight or don't have a, bring up an issue at bedtime. You're about to go to sleep. Why bring up an issue at bedtime? Yeah. Don't bring up an issue when you're in front of other people outside, yeah. right? In a public space. Don't bring up an issue whilst you're driving. There's... there's <laughs> 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 Don't, don't, don't bring up an issue while you're driving, good, right? Good. Or while you're drinking. Well, obviously, we don't drink, but the point is, you know, while you're driving, things can happen. It's dangerous. Yeah. You know, I've I've heard of instances where you know someone just pulls up the handbrake. <laughs> <laughs> Driver, oh, just pull the handbrake, stop the car, <laughs> stop the car. <laughs> you're not stopping, and the handbrake gets pulled up. So they say, let me out. They just get out, right? Yeah. Or you get punched or something. Yeah. Like there's a slap coming across while you're. <laughs> So don't have an argument in certain situations or just don't bring it up. So I know when to, uh, when to pick the, when to do it, right? So there's, there's, other, there's loads of stuff where I'm meant to fight, the do's and the don'ts, stuff like that. I think, you know, these are things that you need to learn. I'll be honest with you, if you don't kind of, you know, you don't just know it, you need to kind of be told it, you need to go, you need to kind of, also you need to learn about your, the, the, your, your spouse. You know, you need, to, you need to be basically attentive to them. Right, you need to know your spouse. Fundamentally, you need to know your spouse. How do you know your spouse? Observe them. Observe them. Observe them. Be attentive to them so you know them. You know when's a good time, when's a bad time. You can read face signals. <laughs> you know when they're coming at you or not. You know when to listen, when to reply. You know when to, <laughs> you know when to be on, on busy all the time. <laughs> you know your spouse, basically. <laughs> you know when to be in a meeting. That's a good idea. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay, right after you. So, um, I, I, before we just close up, I, I do think though that within there's a lot of talk about how to get married. There's a lot of talk yeah. about you know that aspect of marriage, the pre-marriage aspect. But I yeah. think there's a lot of couples that are going through a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And you know, divorce rates, you know, even with our community, they are, they are like it's, it's a thing. And I think there's not enough just kind of practical kind of. Uh, Easily accessible advice for yeah. couples just on just on on kind of maintaining a marriage. Probably yeah, going through as well. So it's always hard to get married. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just hard to get to hard to stay married. Going, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. So um, that's uh, we'll see. Inshallah. I'll leave that with you. Yeah, maybe we can do something <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Perhaps it becomes I, a new, I need years a new podcast. I'm not qualified. A new uh, podcast. I'll leave that with you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my love is easy for you. Inshallah. And Barak once again. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was, uh, it's always good. And obviously Medina College, my love, you know, put Baraka in, in, in Medina College. Jazakallah khan. Barak Afiq. So ولما قسى قلبي وضاقت مذاهبي جعلت رجائي دون عفوك سلما تعاظمني ذنبي فلما قرنته بعفوك ربي كان عفوك أعظما فما زلت ذا عفو عن الذنوب لم تزل تجود وتعفو منة وتكرما